Hello. Um, in this video, I'm going to take you through some SQ past paper examples of percent, percentage yield questions. I have another video on percentage yield that's bit more, it's got more basic examples that you might want to watch first before you have a look at this video if you're not 100% sure on percentage yield calculations yet. So the purpose of this video is to show you how to first of all calculate the percentage yield of a product in a given reaction using some SQA past paper examples and then there will be a couple examples where we're calculating the mass of product produced when given the percentage yield. So just as a bit of initial background which hopefully you know already the percentage yield is the percentage of product that's produced when you compare that to the maximum possible product yield. Um, most reactions are reversible in organic chemistry so you tend not to really get 100% product yield very often when it comes to organic reactions which is why if you ever end up working with pharmaceuticals etc when you're doing a lot of organic chemistry reactions you'll end up calculating the um, percentage yield of almost every reaction that you ever do. So we use this equation down here that you get given in the data booklet on the formula page. So the percentage yield is equivalent to the actual yield. So that's what you actually produced divided by the theoretical yield, which is what you would produce in an ideal world where all the reactants get converted into products times by 100. So first past paper question is from the 2016 higher chemistry paper. And it is specifically question 7C, if you want to go and look at it yourself. So we're given this information here and they can look quite wordy. You can always spot a percentage yield question because it mentions percentage yield in the question. So as you read through the question, my advice would be to pull out any numbers and write it above the equation. It just makes it a bit easier for you to see which numbers go with what chemicals. So a student used 2.5 grams of ethanol. So I'm going to write 2.5 above the ethanol. Uh, and they've used a slight excess of ethanoic acid. So you can ignore the ethanoic acid because that's an excess. So it's not going to impact your yield. And they've produced 2.9 grams. Oops, sorry. Okay, so this is our actual yield, which we will put into the percentage yield equation. However, first of all, we need to work out the theoretical yield. If I do this down here. So I'm going to do it by direct proportion, but you can do it by calculating numbers of moles. <clears throat> In my other percentage yield video, I do show an example of how to do it that way as well. So by, when you do it by direct proportion, you start off with the mole ratio. So it tells us in words here that one mole of ethanol reacts with one mole of ethanoic acid to produce one mole of ethyl ethanoate. So the mole ratio for ethanol to ethanol, ethyl ethanoate, blah, sorry, I can't speak, ethyl ethanoate, ethanol to ethyl ethanoate. Remember, we're ignoring the ethanoic acid because it's in excess, so it's not going to affect our yield. Um, so it's one mole producing one mole. So then what we do is convert the moles to a mass. So thankfully they've given us the GFM or the mass of one mole. So that's 46 grams of ethanol would give us 88 grams of ethyl ethanoate because that's the mass of one mole. We don't have 46 grams though. So we're going to find what one gram would give us. So 88 divided by 46. And then we multiply up to the amount we've got which is 2.5 so that's 88 over 46 times 2.5 so if you put that into your calculator 88 divided by 46 times 2.5 that is 4.78 grams if you round it to two decimal places so that is our theoretical yield so now we've got that and our actual yield we can use the percentage yield equation the percentage yield is actual over theoretical times by 100. So the actual is 2.9, the theoretical we worked out to be 4.78 and we're timesing that by 100 to turn it into a percentage. So you put that into your calculator again, that comes out as 60.67 
60.67% to decimal places. <coughs> Rewrite that zero, it's not very neat. Okay, that's the first example. Next question is from the 2015 higher paper. Question 3B, if you wanted to find it specifically. So I'm going to go through the same process. We've got our equation here and the student obtained. So because it's saying obtained, that's a clue that it's a product. So 3.7 grams of methyl cinnamate. So that's 3.7 grams of this from 6.5 grams of cinnamic acid. So these are the two we're interested in and we're calculating the percentage yield. So again, we have to start off calculating our theoretical yield. This is our actual yield. So one mole of cinnamic acid is going to produce one mole of the methyl cinnamate. So if we then convert those into masses, so one mole of cinnamic acid is 148 grams and one mole of methyl cinnamate is 162 grams. So then we find what one gram would give us and then multiply up to the amount we've got, which is 6.5. So it would be 162 over 148 times 6.5 which gives 7.11 grams to two decimal places. So now we've got the theoretical yield, we can use the percentage yield equation. So actual over theoretical times 100. So the actual was 3.7 grams, which is up here. The theoretical, we worked it down here, is 7.11 grams, and times in that by 100 converts it into a percentage. So that comes out as 52.04% to two decimal places. You can do it, you can round it up as much as you want, as long as your rounding is correct. So that's the two examples calculating the percentage yield. The next two are kind of backwards. So in these next two examples, we're given the percentage yield and we have to work out what the actual yield is. So if we read through the questions, we've got calculate the mass of phenol. So we're putting a question mark above the phenol because we're wanting to work out the mass of that. Produced from 117 kilograms of benzene. Okay, and then it tells us the percentage yield is 90 percent. So we still start off by working out the theoretical yield. So we know from this equation that one mole gives one mole because there's no numbers in front of them. So we convert the moles into a mass that's 78 grams for the benzene and 94 grams for the Phenol. We don't have 78 grams, we find one gram first, so 94 over 78, and then we multiply up to the number of grams we've got. So you can convert the kilograms into grams if you want, but you need your answer in kilograms, so what I'm going to do is just keep this number in kilograms, and then that means my answer will just be in kilograms. So if that's 117, kilograms, then it's 94 over 78 times 117. Now this is a very good mathematics if any of you um, are big into maths and units and physics etc but it just saves you a step in the calculation so even though this is one gram times in, I know times in one by 117 is not going to give you 117 kilograms but because this is in kilograms here, my answer is going to end up in kilograms, which is what you want. So it's okay for this occasion. So 94 divided by 78 times by 117. So that's 141 kilograms, not grams. 
So if that's our theoretical yield, our actual yield is 90% of that. So now we're just really needing to find 90% of 141 kilograms. So you might have different ways of right, uh, finding percentages. You might divide the number by 100 and times it by 90, or you might divide the 90 by 100 and times that by 1 for 1, whichever way you do it. I do it by converting the, so dividing the percentage by 100 to convert it into a decimal. So 0.9 times 141 is 126.9 kilograms. So that's our actual yield. Okay, because it's 90% of the theoretical yield. So last example is the same thing as the last one, just with different chemicals. So we've got a chemist obtained a 84% yield. Um, and they started with 30. 0.5 grams of 2-methyl 2-methyl propene. So we've got, I'm going to write this here now, so one mole of the methyl propene is giving one mole of the 2-methyl 2-propane thiol. It's not always a one-to-one -one ratio, but it just seems to have been in the recent past exams. So one mole of that is 56 grams. One mole of this is 90.1 grams. So we find one gram, which is 90.1 over 56, and then multiply up, we don't have the unit issues this time, to the 30.5 grams we've got. So that gives us an, a theoretical yield of 90.1, Divided by 56 times by 30.5, 49.07 grams. Okay, so if our yield's at 84%, we're going to find 84% of that, so 84% of 49.07. So I do that by doing 0 0.84 times 49.07. You can work out the percentage any which way you want. So that gives us an actual yield of 41.22 grams. And that's it. You can write actual next to it just to make it clear that that's what you've calculated. Okay. So that's uh, four examples from past year questions to calculating the percentage yield and to calculating the yield being given the percentage yield. So hopefully that was helpful and thank you for watching.